Welcome to another video on the fundamentals of Marx. In this video, we will be talking about commodity fetishism. If you are somewhat familiar with Marx's theory, you have likely heard this term thrown around in discussions. Commodity fetishism is Marx's application of his analysis of the commodity to society as a whole. Before we delve into the real meaning of commodity fetishism, let's talk about the elephant in the room. When Marx uses the word fetishism, what does he mean? When people hear the word fetish, they jump to the sexual connotation of the word. Obviously, Marx is not talking about some sort of unsettling human physical attraction to commodities, not to say that such cases don't exist. No, what Marx draws upon here is a much older meaning of the word fetish. Back in the good old days of colonialism, fetish was popularized as a term used to describe inanimate objects that possessed fantastical powers in indigenous cultures. Naturally, Marx's understanding of fetishism is secular and not religious. Nevertheless, the central idea remains the same. Marx tells us that the commodity exists in a contradictory dual state, one that is physical and in every way tangible, and another that sits at the heart of social material relations. We would expect social relations in society to be set and changed by people themselves. After all, without people, there cannot be a society. And yet, we will see how in capitalism, something as complex as social relations is defined not by people, as we would expect, but by things, by inanimate objects. When we look at a commodity, we might be able to tell a number of things about it. We can describe it physically. For example, we may observe a shirt and point out that it is made out of cotton, that it has a bit of polyester around the sleeves and collar to make it more elastic. We know that the shirt is generally for wearing on our upper bodies. But unless it was explicitly made clear to us, we would not be able to point out how, where, and by whom the shirt was made. This is an important part of the shirt too. The creation of the shirt required the employment of a cotton picker, either in a machine or on foot, a machine to process the raw cotton, and a person to stitch it all together. As the shirt was brought into existence, it created or renewed social relations, like those between the factory owner and the worker, or the owner of the distribution company and the truck driver, and even the social relations between you, the buyer, and all the producers whose names and identities you probably do not and cannot know. And that's the big reveal. It is called commodity fetishism because the commodity possesses a mysterious ability to create or renew social relations, while at the same time being something as ordinary and simple as a white cotton t-shirt. We've already taken the red pill. Let's see how far this rabbit hole goes. Marx says that the definite social relations between men themselves takes on the fantastic form of a relation between things. To understand this, let's go back to the t-shirt. The reason why we can't see or know when and by whom the t-shirt was made is because labor in the capitalist system happens privately. Commodities are made in the factory or on the farm or in other privately owned places, but they mean nothing until they are taken to the market for exchange. Private labor becomes social at the point of exchange, but the result isn't an interaction of individuals. It is an interaction of commodities. In our case, it's the interaction between the money in your wallet which, by the way, is nothing more than the price of the value of your sold labor, and the t-shirt on the clothes rack. This sounds really odd, but that's because it's supposed to sound odd. Marx called it commodity fetishism for a reason. The exchange happening in that store is surely not between you and the t-shirt maker or the cotton picker. How could it be, when you don't even know who that person might be? This is the mysterious power of commodity fetishism. It hides the origins of private labor through the mask of the relations of commodities to themselves. A world whose social relations exist between things and not people is one in which people live their lives under the influence of systemic forces. If commodities define social relations in capitalism, then in reality neither the capitalist nor the worker have any part to play. Many thinkers since Marx have built on the foundations that Marx created in his argument about commodity fetishism. After all, a world in which social relations exist only between things and not people ought to have serious psychological consequences. We will end our discussion of commodity fetishism here for now. But even if this is as far as you'd care to explore the idea of commodity fetishism, there's a good chance that the next time you're in a store you might find yourself stopping to wonder about the story behind the box of pencils you're about to buy. You might at the very least discover, upon closer analysis, where those pencils were made but it would be virtually impossible for you to know the name of the person who spent their day operating the machine that made those pencils, or even the name of the person who spent their day building the pencil making machine. If so much is concealed in this system dominated by commodities, how much important information are we missing? What about working conditions? 
wages, the mental and emotional state of the producers of commodities, and other things. It is probable that many, if not most, of the commodities you exchange for your money on a regular basis are created, at one point or another, in exploitative circumstances. Let's summarize. 1. The word fetishism in this video refers to the peculiar nature of the commodity as both an ordinary physical object and a generator of social relations. 2. In capitalism, social relations are relations between commodities and not between people. And 3. Commodity fetishism, in a very fog-like manner, conceals private labor. Private labor is only social at the point of exchange. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you are interested in learning more about Marxist theory, feel free to subscribe and watch out for future uploads. Thank you for watching, and stay radical.